Turn with us to the book of Luke, chapter number 19. And while they're turning, it's good to have Brother Philip and Sister Vicki in service with us. Amy loved us so much they couldn't be gone very long. <laughs> As our children's church is being dismissed, we have missed them. But uh, understand the, the Lord has uh, moved them back home. But it's always good to be in service with them. And we appreciate them. Good to have Brother Roscoe and his family all the way from Panama City. Again, and uh, always a treat to have them in service with us. It's good to have Brenton and Thomas in service with us. Uh, Brenton works with uh, Brother Clint, and uh, we just appreciate them. Glad you're here. Amen. Most of all, glad God is here. I believe he's going to do a work in this house this morning. Let's have church. Amen. I don't want to just be in church. I want to have church. I want to see the Lord move. And work. Luke chapter number 19, beginning our reading with verse number 1. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press because he was little of stature. And he ran before and climbed into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place. He looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. I want to call your attention back to verse number five. It says, And when Jesus came to the place, Notice it doesn't say a place, but the means specific. So when he came to the place, he looked up, saw him, said, come down. I'm going to abide at your house. And Zacchaeus made haste, came down, received him joyfully. I want to preach to the Lord to help me for a few minutes just on two words. On the place. On the place. Amen. Believe he's going to meet with us this morning. Father, I love you. We pray that you add your blessings to the reading of the word of God this morning. I need your anointing. I need your touch. Most of all, oh God, we need your spirit to fill this place. It's not by accident nor by chance that we're here this morning, but you've led us to the place. God, I pray that you do the work that only you can do. We're going to love you, praise you, and give you glory in advance for all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church says amen. And amen, the place. I mean, the Bible says of Zacchaeus, who was the central figure of this story. And the Bible does tell us a little bit about Zacchaeus. The Bible tells us that he's chief among the publicans and, and he was rich. A publican is simply a tax collector. And tax collectors never have been liked very much. When April 15th rolls around and you have to pay the, the, the government and Uncle Sam, you like tax, tax collectors even less and less. But in Bible days, they were even more hated because publicans uh, were considered sellouts by the Jews. Publicans were contract run, or workers that had been contracted out by the Roman government. And as a way to tax form and to, to collect revenue, the, the Romans had already sent soldiers down. They didn't have... A, uh, or did not uh, want to send more resources down and send Roman citizens down into uh, the, the, the Jewish mainland to collect taxes. So they found uh, Jewish people that would do the work for them. And they worked on a commission-based system where the more money by taxes that they collect, then they could put a portion of that and a share of it in their pocket. So they were, they were Jewish by nature, but the, their Jews hated them because they were a representative of the Roman government. And so the, the Bible tells us that's what Zacchaeus was. He was a publican. And the Bible went to great lengths to tell us a, a little bit more about him. Not only was he a publican, but he was rich. So he had done a good job at robbing the people. He had done a good job of collecting funds on behalf of the Roman government. So for Zacchaeus, he had a little bit of uh, power of position within the government. Uh, he had money in his pocket. Uh, so that wasn't an issue, but there was something missing. 
in the life of Zacchaeus. There, there was something missing there that position could not fill. There was something missing there that money could not fill. Amen. There was a hole in his life. Amen. That only a, a Savior could fill. Amen. There was a God-sized hole in his heart. Amen. That only God himself can fill. And can I submit to you. Amen. That every individual. If we are made in the image of God. Which the Bible tells us that we are. Amen. Then there's something on the inside of us. That's always going to be hollow and empty. Until we allow him to fill it. The bar rooms last night uh, were filled with individuals that was trying to fill uh, that void in their heart with booze. Uh, amen. But it will never be filled or quenched with that. Uh, amen. The drug addict. Uh, amen. Is trying to, to, to pump chemicals in their body to fill a void. Uh, amen. That that drug never will fill. Uh, amen. Because only God uh, can fill the void uh, in that heart and in that life. Uh, amen. Zacchaeus had come to that conclusion. Uh, money can't fill it. Uh, Power and position can't fill it. Uh, amen. So he heard that Jesus was passing through Jericho. Uh, and verse number three says he sought to see Jesus uh, for who he was. Uh, he wanted to see this man called Christ. Uh, amen. He had heard about how he had uh, opened the blinded eyes. Uh, he had heard about how he had unstopped the deaf ears. Uh, he had heard about how he had turned water into wine. Uh, so curiosity sprang up in his heart. Uh, and he said, I want to see this Jesus. Jesus uh, for myself. I preached to you the other night about drawing near to God. I mean, for any man that's willing to draw near unto him, God will draw near in return. Amen. There's never been a man Amen. That settled in his heart. Amen. I want more of this God. I want more of this Christ. There's never been a man that he's rejected or refused. I feel sorry for the Calvinist peddling that doctrine. Amen. That says only the elect are going to be making. No, my Bible says whosoever will. Amen. Let him come. Amen. He that is a thirst, let him come. Draw from the water. Amen. The well of life freely. Amen. So Zacchaeus had a hole in his heart. Money couldn't fill. Government couldn't fill. He set out. I'm going to go. I'm going to see Jesus. But I don't want you to notice where he was. I want you to notice Zacchaeus' position because the Bible tells us specifically where he was. He was located in Jericho. I'm telling you, I'm going to have church this morning whether you do or not. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I know the rest of what God has shown me. Amen. Jericho. Zacchaeus is the central person in the story. Jericho is the central place of the story. Amen. As we look at the history of Jericho, we know that it's most famous for Joshua when he led the children of Israel. And he uh, marched around that wall and the Lord sent a victory. He made the walls to collapse. Uh, and that was the first victory that the children of Israel had when they entered into the promised land. Uh, and then but, uh, notice something. When that happened, uh, at the end of that story, Joshua pronounced a curse uh, on the city of Jericho. And he said, Cursed be the man uh, that rebuilds this, this city. Uh, cursed be the man uh, that tries to resurrect this city again. Uh, amen. He said that his two boys, uh, his first born and his youngest son they're going to die when they rebuild this city well amen man does what man does they didn't think much about that and there was a man that rebuilt the city of Jericho and guess what he lost his oldest boy and his youngest boy rebuilding that city so Jericho was known to be a cursed city that had a curse hanging over it. Amen. But I want you to notice something. Amen. When Jesus, the Bible says that he entered and he passed through Jericho. Even though this city had a curse hanging over its head, Christ honored it with his presence. Amen. In this story, the curse didn't stop Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The curse uh, didn't stop Jesus. No, no. Uh, amen. Uh, I can tell you, folks, Zacchaeus is a picture of us all uh, because we all live uh, in a sin-filled world uh, and we all have the curse of sin uh, hanging over our head. Hallelujah. We've all sinned uh, and fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, we all deserve death. Uh, we all deserve hell. Uh, we all deserve the grave. Uh, but I can tell you the same way uh, that the curse didn't stop Jesus from getting to Zacchaeus. Thank God the curse
curse didn't stop Jesus from getting to me. Thank God the curse didn't stop Jesus from getting to you. But he went right to the city with a curse on it because there was a hungry man that had an appetite and a desire to find out about this Christ. And Christ stopped at nothing to get to where he was. I can tell you the curse didn't stop Jesus from getting to Zacchaeus. And your curse, you might be here this morning bound by the curse of sin hanging over your head the same way the curse didn't stop Jesus from getting to Zacchaeus. The curse ain't going to stop God from reaching out to you this morning with the same grace and mercy and love. Thank God. The curse don't stop him. I don't have time to preach all of this and have a long introduction. We see the person. We see the place. We see his problem. Zacchaeus, the Bible tells us, was short and little of stature. And everywhere Jesus went, he attracted a crowd. And Zacchaeus desired to see Jesus, but he could not because of the crowd. Isn't that just like the stinking devil? He's going to do everything that he can to keep you from getting to Jesus. You want to be saved? Amen. He's going to do everything that he can to put every roadblock in front of your path to keep you lost. You want to, you desire healing in your body? He's going to put every negative devil or doctor report in your path that he can. To make doubt fill this mind. You want to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost? He's going to do everything he can to hinder and to stop. Amen. Because your hell's worst nightmare. Amen. Amen. And he's going to do anything that he can. Amen. To keep you from getting to Jesus. And notice what he used. He used people to keep Zacchaeus from getting to Jesus. That's a message in and of itself right there. Too many times we get our eyes on people. Yes. We get them off of Jesus. God help us. The devil magnified Zacchaeus' situation. He couldn't get to Jesus because he was short. The devil put people in his path to hinder him, to keep him from getting to Christ. But then we see Zacchaeus' perseverance. We see the person, the place, the problem, but we see his perseverance. He said, if these people won't help me get to Jesus, I'm going to rise above these people. I've, I've got to do something to get Jesus' attention. Amen. So he looked around for a ladder. He couldn't find a ladder. He looked around for a, a, a building with a balcony and a deck. Couldn't find one. But he found a sycamore tree. A sycamore tree wasn't much more than a bush. Amen. But he said, if this bush uh, will allow me to see Jesus, this bush uh, is what I'll climb. So he persevered past the problem. Listen, uh, when you make up in your mind to see that you're going to see Jesus, uh, you're going to have to persevere past some things. Uh, you're going to have to push your way past the crowd. Uh, amen. If, those, if that crowd of people ain't going to help you get to Jesus, uh, then rise above the crowd. Uh, amen. If that friend uh, ain't going to help you get to Jesus uh, and have an encounter with him, uh, do whatever you have to do. Uh, to rise above them so you can see Jesus for yourself. Amen. We've got to be like Zacchaeus this morning and we got to have a mind of perseverance that says no matter what, no matter what it takes, I've got to see Jesus. Oh my God. I've got to have an encounter. I've got to have a touch. I can't live the same way this morning. If I've got to push my way past people, I'm going to shove my way through the crowd. If I've got to push myself through pain. I'm going to press my way through it. If I have got to get on my knees and crawl like a woman with the issue of blood, I'm going to do whatever it takes to persevere. I am going to see this Christ. Hallelujah. Hell can do nothing when we make up our mind, church. The Bible says a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. He'll never receive the blessings of the Lord. But I can tell you what a man makes up in his mind. I'm going to stop at nothing to see this Christ. There is absolutely nothing hell can do to stop you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we see his perseverance. Climbs up in a sycamore tree. 
He had the simple goal. All he wanted to do was to see Jesus. Nothing else mattered. There was no other thought process in his mind. Climbed up in that tree. But verse 5 says, when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him. Hallelujah. Zacchaeus went with the expectations, I just want to see Jesus for myself. But what he didn't know was all the while, the Holy Ghost was leading him to the place. Not a place, but the place. To the specific place where Jesus was going to stop. Zacchaeus didn't know that, but the Holy Ghost did. Zacchaeus didn't know this, but years ago, that sycamore tree was divinely planted, amen, by the Spirit of God. Because God knew that there was going to come a day when there was going to be a short man that couldn't see his son because of the crowd. So he put that tree in right the, the exact perfect place. Amen. With his foreknowledge in mind. So that the Holy Ghost could get a hold of Zacchaeus. Put it in his heart to climb up in that tree. And all the while, the Holy Ghost was leading Jesus. Amen. To the place. Amen. Where worlds could connect and collide. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The place was very specific. The Holy Ghost will always lead men to the perfect place uh, where they can have an encounter uh, with God Almighty. I can tell you folks, uh, it's not by accident nor by chance uh, that you're here this morning, uh, but the Holy Ghost uh, had a hold of your heart string uh, and been leading you this morning uh, to the place. Uh, hallelujah. God Almighty uh, woke you up this morning, uh, put breath in your lungs, uh, put blood in your veins. Why? Because uh, He was leading you to the place uh, where by His Spirit, uh, He was going to be. By his voice, he's going to talk. And by his hand, he is going to touch. You are in the right place this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. This was a specific place led by the Holy Ghost where Christ and Zacchaeus was going to have an encounter. Amen. This was a place of encounter. Where two worlds collided. Where the earthly met the heavenly. Where a man of sin met the man of God. Where a man under a curse met the man with the cure. Where a Jerichoite met Jesus the Nazarite. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost led Zacchaeus to the place of encounter where Jesus could be seen. The same way the Holy Ghost has led you to the place this morning of encounter. Where you can come face to face with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And you can encounter this same Savior. Jesus came to the place. He looked up, saw him, and said unto him, Zacchaeus, this may not do for you what it does for me. There was no formal introduction here. Jesus didn't look up and see a bozo on a limb and say, hobo, come down. He didn't look up and just call him some generic term. But he looked up and he called him by his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my God. He knew where he was. And he knew his very name. Can I tell you this morning? Jesus knows where you are. But more than that personally, he knows your name. Hallelujah. And the same way he called out unto Zacchaeus by the Spirit he's calling you out by your name hallelujah he's calling you out personally uh, giving you a personal invitation uh, amen knowing where you are uh, knowing what you need hallelujah but this morning uh, he knows where you are uh, he knows what you need uh, amen he said I am the good shepherd and know my sheep uh, and am known of mine uh, he said in Isaiah 43 I am the Lord uh, that created thee uh, amen fear not uh, for I have redeemed thee and I have called thee by name uh, this morning I've got 
got good news. You're in the right place. You're in the place where Jesus is. But more than that, He wants to get personal with you. He don't want to just be in the same house that you're in. No, 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 no. He wants to get personal. He wants to call you by name. He wants to call you out of what you're in. He wants to call you down from the tree that you're at. Amen. He gives you something like you've never had before. Let you encounter Him. Let you see Him. Let you know Him. He's calling out to you this morning. And He's calling you, not by sinner, but He's calling you by your name. God, I feel the Holy Ghost this morning. This was a place of encounter where Zacchaeus encountered Jesus. But can I tell you this morning, it went deeper than encounter. This encounter gave way to an experience. You see, there's a difference between encounter and an experience. To encounter, someone means to have an unexpected or a casual meeting with someone or something. I've encountered a lot of acquaintances along this journey. To have an encounter, I've brushed elbows with a whole lot of people. But that don't mean I know that person. And that don't mean it went more than just a shallow greeting, exchanging of pleasantries. That's what an encounter is, but an experience means the fact or state of having been affected by or gain knowledge through direct observation or participation. You see, an encounter is very shallow, but an experience is something you'll never forget. To experience something means you gain knowledge about it. It means you have participated. It means you have been affected. You have been impacted. Amen. By amen that encounter and by that experience. I can tell you folks, there's a lot of people that have encountered with Jesus. They have been in his presence. But that's as far as the relationship has ever gotten. It's just a simple, casual thing. Amen. You'll see them on Easter. You'll see them on Christmas. Amen. They'll come and go through the religious rituals and feel like they have solved Amen. Their uh, religious duties for the year. Amen. That's all that is. It's just an encounter. They encounter. There's a casualness there. It's very shallow. But folks, when you experience this Christ, it goes much deeper than an encounter. It gets personal. It goes right to the very heart of that man. It encompasses every fiber of that man's being. It's deeper than an encounter. But it will leave a lasting impact, a lasting impression on your life. And you will be forever changed. This morning, God wants His Spirit to be more than just a mere encounter. But God wants you to experience Him in His fullness. He wants to impact your life. Folks, He wants to change your life. Change you from where you are to where He wants you to be. He's led you to the place so that you can experience Him. So you can know firsthand about this grace that I'm preaching about. About the mercy and the love. The redemption, the forgiveness, the power that he has you can't have that with an encounter but he wants to give you an experience that consumes every fiber of your being Zacchaeus come down he called him by name this was a place of encounter it's a place of experience Can I tell you it was a place that exceeded all of his expectations. He went there just wanting to see Jesus with his eyes. But when Jesus called him down, he said, Zacchaeus, come down and make haste. Because he said, I'm going home with you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This was a place that exceeded all of his expectations. And I can tell you that's the exact same way that an experience with Christ does. He will always exceed your expectations. There's never been a man that's been lost and passed from death and life to get born again and say, man, I didn't like that. 
I, I was expecting something different. Brother Homer, I was let down. There never has been such a man. But I can tell you, every man that's truly been born again passed from death into life. Yeah. Hallelujah. The salvation experience far supersedes his expectations. Amen. To have that feeling of forgiveness, to have uh, that guilt, to have that sin, to have that shame rolled off of your shoulders. Uh, amen. I remember the night that I was born again. Uh, oh, the glory of God filled my soul. Uh, I remember it was a long walk back from the church to where I was staying that night. Uh, and when I was walking, it was like my feet wasn't even hitting the ground. Uh, I honestly felt, uh, amen, like I was floating on the ground. Uh, amen. I had to check my feet to make sure that they were hitting the pavement. Uh, amen. That's how light uh, I felt. Uh, Amen. And there was nothing light about me. Hallelujah. Amen. But I just felt uh, in that moment I'd been carried around sin. Uh, amen. My whole life. Uh, I carried around that weight. Uh, amen. That was on my shoulders. But that moment uh, in that altar uh, when I experienced this Christ, uh, all of that uh, rolled off my back. Uh, all the sin. Uh, all the shame. Uh, that void in my life. Uh, I was trying to fill with all kinds of things. Uh, it was instantaneously filled uh, with Christ himself. I can tell you he far exceeded my expectations and what I thought about religion and what I thought to be new or what I thought to be true amen it couldn't compare with the reality of what I found in this Christ I can tell you this morning he still exceeds my expectations place of encounter place of experience this place will exceed your expectations. Notice this. That kids came down. Jesus told him, I'm going home with you today, boy. And when he got into the house, the Bible said, salvation has come to this house. Zacchaeus experienced Christ. It didn't just change Zacchaeus. But God brought about a revival that changed his whole family. Brought about revival that changed his whole family. Again, Jesus succeeded his expectations. Your family life may be in turmoil this morning, but can I tell you, Jesus still exceeds expectations. Hallelujah. Notice this. Jesus had to change Zacchaeus before he could change his family. Jesus had to start somewhere. Listen, there's been some times over 10 years where me and that beautiful angel right there, we don't have arguments, but we have had some intense moments of fellowship. Say amen to me, husbands. Times I get down to the altar, God change her. Change this. Change my kids. <laughs> but I can tell you more times, God convicts me. God changes me. It's your attitude that's wrong. It's you that needs to be fixed. It's you that I need to tweak some things on. Uh, amen. Zacchaeus. Uh, amen. His whole family needed something done in his house. Uh, but God had to start with him. Uh, amen. Your family may be in chaos this morning. But this morning, God wants to start with you. God wants to fix you. And when God fixes you, He'll fix your family. Amen. When God fixes you, He'll fix those unruly kids. When God fixes you, He'll fix that wife. Amen. Wife, when God fixes you, He'll fix that husband. Amen. Say, Lord, start with me. Let it begin with me. I don't want to push the buck off on somebody else. I need revival myself. I need to touch myself. I need an experience myself. And I know when you change me, you can't change them. Say, not me, preacher. My situation's too far gone. It's too hopeless. If God can fix Zacchaeus, God can fix them. Hallelujah. If God can fix you, God can fix them. Hallelujah. He did it for Zacchaeus this morning. And God will do it for you for Zacchaeus. God led him to the place. And it was a place of salvation that forever changed his life. 
forever changed his life. But I want you to look at the importance of this moment and the importance of his experience. And we're going to go through mock speed here to try to finish up in just a few minutes. But you look at the chronological line of events in Scripture. The Bible says Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. The only stop he made was for Zacchaeus. How many times has Jesus entered into the service? Passes through our service. When we have Jesus, amen, in our presence, when we have Jesus close by, we better get what we can while we can. What we can while we can. He entered and he passed through Jericho. But you read it for yourself in Scripture. This was the last time that he would ever walk through the gates of the city. This was the last time that he would ever enter in Jericho. For it was on the heels of this that he would go to Jerusalem. There the triumphal entry would occur. And then just a few short days later, he was to be crucified and he would die. Thank God he didn't stay dead. He got up. But this was the last time physically that the man, Christ Jesus, would ever walk by the place wow. for Zacchaeus it was now or never mm-hmm. if he had waited five more minutes it would have been five minutes too late he would have missed out on the greatest experience that he ever could have received his family would have missed out on revival his household would have missed out uh, on salvation where every one of them were saved. Uh, amen. If he had just waited to next week, uh, if he said, man, uh, I'm tired. Uh, amen. I'm just going to catch Jesus the next time he comes. Uh, uh, I'm sick. Uh, amen. I, I don't feel the best this morning. I've got a, I've got a headache. Uh, I, I'm just going to stay in bed this morning and I'll catch Jesus the next time he passes through. Uh, if he had given in to the excuses, uh, amen, he never would have experienced this Christ. Uh, amen. It was now or it was never. Can I tell you for the church it is now or it's never. You're in the place this morning but you're not ever promised tomorrow. Amen. If you put it off another day, another week, another month, that day, week, or month may never come. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time of the Lord. Don't wait till the next church service. Don't wait till the next prayer meeting. Don't wait till the next revival or camp meeting. God has led you to the place now. Amen. His spirit is here now. Take advantage of the opportunity and be like Zacchaeus. I'm not letting go until you bless me. Now, or it's never, this was a place of salvation. I can tell you there's salvation in the house for somebody this morning because the Savior is in this house. For Zacchaeus, it was a place of salvation. You can look back there. You can follow the trail. You just type in the place in a Bible search engine and you're going to be reading for a while of all the places that are in Scripture. But I do want to share some of them with you this morning in closing. Amen. For Abraham in Genesis 13, the Lord said unto Abram, after this the lot, after the lot was separated from him, lift up thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward and southward and eastward and westward. And all the land which thou seest to thee will I give it and to thy seed forever. For Abraham, this was a place of promise. Folks, when God leads you to the place, you can count on the promises of God being there. Hallelujah. The promises of God are yea. And in Him, amen. When you're led to the place, amen, you were promised of His presence. But it didn't stop there in Genesis chapter number 22 when He and His son Isaac was led to Mount Moriah where He was going to offer His son as a sacrifice unto the Lord. The Bible says that when they came to the place which God had told him of, notice Isaac and Abraham just didn't concoct this place on their own accord. God led them to the place. 
God had told him, he said, when you come to the place that I have told you of, build an altar, Abraham, and offer up your son. Abraham did that. He followed the working of the Spirit. The same Spirit that led Zacchaeus to the place. It led Abraham to this place. It led Isaac to this place. He offered his son Isaac on an altar and picked up a knife to slay his son. But all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord spoke to him and said, Abraham, lay not the light the knife to your son. I see that you, amen, truly love the Lord. I'm paraphrasing. Amen. But he said, lift up your eyes. And he looked. And he looked in the thicket and he heard a bleating. And it was a ram that had been caught in the thicket. You see, when Abraham was led to the place, not only was the promise of God fulfilled, but he found provision for his greatest need. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, there's still a ram in the thicket this morning. There's still a ram, hallelujah, that's able to meet your need. We know that that was a type of the Lord Jesus Christ that would die of substitutionary death. The ram took Isaac's place the same way that Christ took my place and He took your place. He is the greatest provision that I have ever found. But when you're led to the place, not only do you find God's promise, but you find His provision. Moses in Exodus 3 climbs the mountain of God. God tells him to come up not hither but to put off the shoes from off thy feet for the place that you stand is holy ground. I can tell you folks any place where Christ is it's holy ground. Hallelujah. The holiness. What do you find at the place? You find His promise. You find His provision. You find His holiness. For Joshua. Amen. After they crossed the river Jordan, before they could ever conquer Jericho, He led them to Gilgal. The place of the renewing of the covenant. Where they had to restore the covenant of circumcision between God's people and Him. The Bible says that when they came to the place, the reproach was rolled off of them. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes, I can tell you, when you come to the place and you experience this Christ, not only does he take your sin, but he takes your reproach, rolls it off of you, and makes it just as if it had never happened before for the church. And Acts 4 verse, 4, verse 31, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken. The presence of the Lord filled the place, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. The place of infilling. I mean, we can find out there's all kind of places in the word of God that you can find. I don't have time to deal with them all. There's just a few. Let me ask you a question this morning. What do we call where we're standing right now? Don't be afraid. Sanctuary, right? This is the sanctuary. We are gathered together in the sanctuary worshiping the Lord. You want me to tell you what sanctuary means? You look up sanctuary, Hebrew and in the Greek. The word sanctuary means a holy place. The holy place. The place where God's presence abides. This morning, just by way of sitting on this pew, you're in the place. Hallelujah. You're in the place. The Lord has led you to this place. And this morning, I don't care if you're saved or unsaved. There's a work he wants to do in your life. If you ain't saved, today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time of the Lord. The same way he came from Zacchaeus, he came for you. The same way the curse that was hanging over Zacchaeus' head didn't stop him from getting to where he was. I can tell you, your curse of sin didn't stop Jesus from coming for you. Hallelujah. Come to where you are. If you are born again, you need healing in your body. You're in the right place. Curse to help me. I'm done. Amen, Brother Roscoe. 
you seek in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you're in the right place this morning. Hallelujah. You're in the holy place. You're in the place where God's Spirit abounds and abides. And folks, can I, I feel the Holy Ghost so strong right now. Hey man, if I didn't feel it, I wouldn't say it. But there's absolutely no telling what's going to happen in this place this morning. Hallelujah. You've got a need in your life. You're in the right place at the right time in the presence of the right God. Amen. You're here with a need. You're here with a family struggle and a situation. Amen. Not only can He fix you, He can fix that family. Hallelujah. He can can fix the broken pieces. He can fix amen, that which is broken and cannot let you in on a little secret. Amen. Jesus is a master builder. He can take that which is broken and He can put the pieces back together again. And it's better than it ever was in its original state. Don't you give up hope on God. Don't you give up hope and say it's impossible. With man it's impossible. But all things are possible to Him that believes I'm telling you folks there's enough power in this house to resurrect the dead there's enough power in this house to save all the holy there's enough power in this house to empty out self bowing we're in the place amen he's gracious with his presence and with his power you can have whatever you desire this morning stand with me all over the building I'm done the place the place. All heads bowed, all hearts are praying. You hear this morning very quickly, we about to move on. But you hear and you say, Preacher, I'm lost this morning. I need to be saved. I need to be saved. The Lord has led me to this place. The Holy Ghost is convicting my heart. Real quick, slip up your hand right where you are. God knows, God sees. Yes, God sees, God sees. Hallelujah. Real quick, we're about to change the order of the service. Hallelujah. But I never want to give an opportunity not give an opportunity for the lost to be saved. Amen. Thank you. God sees we're going to open up these altars in just a minute. Amen. When we do come, we're going to pray with you. We're going to pray for you. Believe God today is the day of salvation for you. Amen. But if you're here and there's impossible situations, amen, that you can't fix, amen, that you're facing, that you're up against, and you don't have a way, the mechanism, or the means to fix it. Amen. And you're sitting in this place this morning. With more questions than answers. Hey man, you're sitting here with more problems than solutions. Hey man, if you're here and you're sick in your body, Sister Murphy, come to us this morning. We're going to have special prayer for her. But she's saying, Brother, I'm going blind in my eyes. I need a miracle. Since there's enough power in this place to heal you right now. Amen. He's done it before, standing right there. I have to believe my God can do it again. Amen. You're here. Amen. And you need a touch in your body. Amen. Whatever the need may be. Amen. But just a moment of honesty between you and God. Just lift up your hand right where you are. I need a touch this morning. All over this building, hands are going up. All over this building. Amen. Almost 100%. Amen. Individuals saying, I need something for the Lord. You're in the right place at the right time. Amen. I want you to take a step of faith. Whether you're here, you need to be saved. Or whether you are saved, you need to be touched. Need God to do something. You need the baptism. You need healing. You need family problems fixed. Amen. Step out. Step out in faith. Get into this altar this morning. Lift your heart, your hands, your voices toward heaven. And believe what He did for Zacchaeus. He's going to do for you. Come on, church. Help us pray this morning.